Yo, hey guys, welcome back to Ding Talks. In this video, we're going to be checking out the best cheap gaming monitors you could pick up right now this year. These monitors, some of them are as low as $200, some of them are above $200, but none of them is actually above, I think, $700. So, for as low as $200, you could pick one of these guys. Let's go straight to this video. If this is your first time opening this YouTube channel, please do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell notification for more content like this coming at you every week. At number 4, we have the Banky XL2430. Number three, this is actually an ultra wide monitor, but it's also really cheap and it's great for gaming. At number three, we have the LG 34 UM68P. So, first off, let's go over some of the specs of the monitor. So, it's a 34 inch IPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1080p. Do you have a 21 to 9 aspect ratio or ultra wide as it's commonly referred to? So the monitor has a advertised refresh rate of 75 hertz with AMD's FreeSync technology. However, as I'm using an Nvidia card myself, I have only been able to get up to 60 hertz with the DisplayPort cable. And speaking of DisplayPort, you get one DisplayPort input on the back and two HDMI inputs as well. The base of the monitor is very nice and sturdy and you get all the usual height and tilt adjustments so there's no problems there. The menu system on the monitor is also very easy to use and navigate. Although for me, I rarely need to use the menu as out of the box the monitor was calibrated very well. So after months of using this monitor as my daily driver, is there anything I don't like? The only issue I have had is the occasional screen tearing when I'm using Google Chrome, but this hasn't been that noticeable when I'm doing it for long periods of time. Other than that, I have loved this monitor. The main reason I went ultra wide was to improve my workflow and multitasking. The extra screen real estate is excellent for this. I can have my editing software open and snap it to one side of the screen and have something like a script or Spotify or something like that snap to the other side, while it's still easy to navigate both as needed. So how does it perform with gaming? So I don't game a whole lot myself, but the little bit I have gamed on it, I've had no problems. The colors are vibrant and the blacks are black as you'd expect with an IPS display. You do get a bit of backlight bleed, which unfortunately will be different on each individual monitor. However, on mine, it is noticeable when there is a pure black screen, but when you're actually using the monitor for day-to-day -day tasks, it is virtually invisible. So overall guys, I'm very happy with this monitor and I'd highly recommend it to anyone looking for a budget ultra-wide monitor or anyone looking to improve their workflow. At number two, we have the Dell Gaming S2417DG. Like its sibling, the S2417DG is a TN LCD gaming monitor with a 144Hz refresh rate, 1 millisecond response time, and G Sync. Most notably, though, it also shares the same 2560x1440 resolution as its bigger brother, rather than the 1920x1080 resolution you normally get on 24 inch displays. This immediately elevates this monitor above any others of its size 
as it opens up the possibility of gaming at a high resolution, resulting in a sharper image, and when on your desktop it allows you to get a lot more done. The pixel density of 123 pixels per inch may be a touch too high for some users, but it's only slightly higher than what I consider the ideal level of 110 pixels per inch, which is what you get on a typical 27 inch monitor with the same resolution. Meanwhile, I find the 90 pixels per inch that you get with normal 1080p 24 inch displays to be a little low. Either way, if you are struggling you can always use Windows Scaling to make things more readable most of the time, just leaving the higher resolution option for when needed. Zooming back out a bit though, the first thing that strikes you about this monitor isn't its resolution, but its design. I think there's a strong argument for saying this is the best looking gaming monitor you can buy, and certainly the best 24 inch model. Its simple business like stand and dark grey and black paint job are just so much classier than any other display out there while the hidden bezel gives the whole thing such a sense of sleekness. The only slip-up is the glossy plastic on the back, which inevitably will show up fingerprints and dirt more than a matte finish. As for more practical considerations, the stand offers plenty of adjustability with height, tilt, pivot and rotation all available. Plus the stand clips in and out of place really easily and there's a 100 by 100 mm vase mount underneath for use with other stands. Connectivity is also good for a G-Sync display. The usual limitations apply for video inputs with just one each of DisplayPort and HDMI, but you also get a USB 3 hub with two ports on the back and two on the left side, where there's also a headphone jack. Sadly, you don't get any speakers though. As for the on-screen display, Dell has done a decent job. The buttons and menus line up nicely and work together in an intuitive manner. There's also a good selection of options in the menus, which are balanced nicely between offering plenty of features while not getting too bogged down with superfluous extras. Meanwhile the buttons are a bit unresponsive so there's still room for improvement. When it comes to image quality this display largely gets things right. Being a TN panel viewing angles aren't its strong suit but it's far from the worst and so long as you don't go to extreme angles it's okay. As for colour reproduction the use of a proper 8-bit panel rather than 6-bit with dithering has paid dividends as the image is noticeably more stable and accurate. What's more, right out of the box, many aspects of its image quality are in fact excellent. At number 1, we have the Asus VG245H. With the price around $170, this is definitely worth looking into. Straight out of the box, you get a VGA cord, an HDMI, power cord, an aux cord, and obviously the monitor. This is a 1920 by 1080p Full HD screen set at 75Hz. It is a TN panel, but it is one of the better looking TN panels I have seen. It has a 1 millisecond response time and is built with AMD's FreeSync technology. The bezels on the screen are about a half an inch big, pretty decent sized bezels in my opinion, nothing to distract you from the screen itself. Like I said before, this is one of the better looking TN panels I have seen, but coming from only using IPS monitors, I can definitely see the differences. Colors are a bit washed out, viewing angles are not the greatest, and just the overall clarity of an IPS panel is not there. But for $170, there has been worse screens. And the features this monitor comes with, there is no complaining. One of the few features you do not see on many cheap monitors is the movability of the screen. Both the base and the monitor itself can swivel 90 degrees in both directions. It can also raise very high and very low, giving the user their best complete experience. The build quality of the monitor is not the best with it being nearly 100% plastic, but how they use the plastic and its design is nothing to shy away from. It goes for a gaming-like appearance without being too obnoxious. It has a cool design molded into the back with the Asus logo also being there. The base is an almost square looking thing that fits well on most desks. The button logos on the front are controlled with buttons on the back with a little arcade knob type thing to navigate through the menu, which is a nice touch. The power light indicator is located below the bezel on the right side, red when asleep and white when on. Also included is the Kensington lock as seen here. The ports that are included are two HDMIs, the power plug, VGA, and a 3.5mm audio and headset jack, all marked with their respected logos. It also has built-in speakers if you do not already have headphones or external speakers. They sound quiet and just not good. Here's what they sound like at 100% volume compared to 60% volume on my external speakers. Hey guys, it's Ben from Ben's Custom Films and today I am doing a 2018 PC build. Hey guys, it's Ben from Ben's Custom Films and today I am doing a 2018 PC build. Now onto the gameplay for this monitor. I'm playing Rainbow Six Siege here, and although it's not 144Hz and beyond, 75Hz is definitely a noticeable difference between 60Hz, something I thought that wasn't going to happen. 
Although this is mainly geared towards console gaming, it creates a lot more of a smoother gameplay for PC gaming overall that I find very attractive. Alright, thank you all for watching this video. Please do well to drop a like, comment if you have any question or contribution. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content like this coming at you. And also don't forget to click on the email list down there and sign up to get real-time hot deals online, real-time giveaway, coupon codes, video updates and so many other good stuff. Thank you all for watching this video. Bye for now. Catch you guys next time on Dane Talks.